I have to admit something. Lately, I've been having second thoughts on what I'm doing to my 1962 Mercury Comet. This is a car I bought in rough shape, but in very, very original condition. Still has the registration papers from 1974. Still has the student parking pass from that year, even. And still has the original 160 cubic inch, 2.6 liter inline six engine, or at least it did. What I'm doing is I'm replacing that old tractor engine with an electric motor from a 2014 Nissan Leaf. Way for the future, dude. 100% electronic. Some of you might be saying right now, yeah, you should be having second thoughts about doing that. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Yes, I agree that not all vehicles should be converted to EV. Not muscle cars, rare, exotic cars, etc. I understand the confluence of art and mechanical engineering and how beautiful it can be. And I understand those who prefer mechanical systems over electronic systems. Internal combustion engines are interesting and they're fun to tinker on and get them tuned up. I also agree that the driving experience in an electric vehicle is drastically different. Some would even say ruin. After this conversion, I won't have the feeling of cranking that engine over, carefully giving it just the right amount of throttle for it to start, putting it in the gear and then accelerating down the road. So then why am I EV swapping my Mercury Comet? Well, I don't know if you've heard of this thing called global warming, but it is pretty bad. Like, mass extinction bad. You don't have to be an expert to see that it's pretty hot out there lately. And there's been huge upticks in wildfires, hurricanes, floods, and droughts. The climate crisis has already started. And here in America, transportation is the top emitter of greenhouse gases. That means if we want to leave a livable planet for future generations, we're going to have to stop burning fossil fuels. So I want a future without fossil fuels, but I also want a future with classic cars still on the road, because classic cars are rad. I'm not trying to single-handedly fix the planet. This is just a personal choice of mine to reduce my own emissions as much as possible. For me, personally, the perfect driving experience is not about the noise from the engine or the selection of the gear. For me, it is just knowing that I'm not burning gasoline while I'm driving. I'm doing what makes me happy. I want to drive the coolest fucking car in town while not burning fossil fuels. And if you want to chime in with your favorite theory on why climate change isn't real, and this is all a conspiracy by the deep state to take away our freedom to burn flammable and dangerous petrochemicals, then put it in the comments and I'll take a look at it. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? So that was why I'm doing this project. Let's talk about how. In the previous episode for this project, which if you haven't seen yet, please check it out because it took a lot of time to create. In that episode, I revealed my secret weapon for this project and how it's going to be affordable for me. I'm using the Resolve EV controller. It's like a VCU and it will plug into all of the Nissan Leaf drivetrain components, especially the charger and the battery management system. Because if I had to buy my own aftermarket battery management system, that'd be easily $1,000 or more. And so it's really all about feasibility for this. In that video, I was showing you the beginnings of the wiring harness I was building. Well, I finished that work off camera, and here is my handiwork. I actually used a lot of USB cable and Firewire and stranded Cat6 Ethernet cable. So, Lord, you can imagine where it goes from here. He fixes the cable. And to connect all that together, I was using those crimp connectors and low heat solder connectors. There must be over a hundred connectors and each one is a potential failure point connecting to the 23 gauge wires of the cat six cable which was, at least it was stranded uh, that was especially bad as the wires that small do not get crimped easily so i resorted to those low heat solder connectors but sometimes the solder just never melts and i was developing my technique as i was working on it which is not ideal especially for things like the throttle pedal cable Thankfully, though, I reached out to Resolve EV and they hooked me up with their complete wiring harness. So let's compare that one with mine. So here is my homemade wiring harness. And, you know, much of it, thankfully, is some actual 20 gauge automotive grade wiring wires that are PVC coated. Here's the throttle 
cable though. Just a, this is the Cat6 cable that I sh probably should not have used. Um, these are the connectors from the Nissan Leaf that I took all apart. And yeah, it's a little bit of a mess. This connector is actually broken because I broke it when I was taking it apart. Even though I cut all these corners and costs, I still spent at least 200 maybe $300 on everything. Oh, and I haven't even connected the Chatamo charger. A little bit of a mess. Now, let's grab the one from Resolve. Here it is. Shipped from Gothenburg, Sweden. Thank you, Isaac, for sending this to me. Everything is extremely well labeled. The labels, they obviously used a label maker for heat shrink labels, <laughs> extenders. And these are brand new connectors, not, you know, 10 year old ones that might be broken like mine are. Here's for your throttle. And this one is for a leaf and very well shielded. Look at the shielding on this. So the throttle pedal obviously is important. You don't want that to short out and suddenly get full full throttle signal to the VCU. And then here's the inverter, and this is what is broken on mine. My car is pretty long, and I'm putting the motor and the inverter in the back, but the VCU will be in the front under the dash, so I will definitely need these extenders. Let's open up one of these. So this one has a fuse box, very well sealed up, as you can see. Okay, little micro fuses and a micro relay, which is good because I don't have a lot of space to work with. I think possibly the best part about this wiring harness, there's no crimp connectors or solders. That's a wire going from this connector to that connector. So that's just going to eliminate a lot of points of failure and OBD2. So it has an OBD2 female port here. And I'll plug in my dongle and then I could connect it to the Leaf Spy Pro app. So this is fucking awesome. I'm really fucking happy with this. Do you have to use so many cuss words? One more thing I want to share is that I picked up these two gauges from Speed Hut. And the link to these gauges are on the Resolve EV website as well. And I picked up one for the RPM of the motor and for the coolant temperature. And the, they're actually upside down in this video and of course this video is from when I was building and testing my own wiring harness um, and the reason I got the RPM one is it has an on-off light okay and while I pour myself a drink I'll show you the footage from the engine removal process and um, basically de-icing the whole car as the, you know, in the parlance of our times. And uh, let's roll the footage.
here's what's going out and here's what's going in okay I just picked up this hanging scale and we're gonna find out how much this old tractor engine weighs so make your bets now Four hundred and seventy-five pounds. Let's see if I can't throw on this starter, which has got to be another twenty pounds. Yeah. All the way up to about five hundred pounds. Remember, uh, subtract ten pounds for just the weight of the rigging here, and you got about four hundred and eighty pounds for this whole shebang here. And the battery pack. I know is 600 pounds so it will be a bit heavier in the front this uh, I think is like I have, I have the number written down somewhere but probably around 200 pounds so I think it'll actually come out to be a little bit heavier but not by much I sold the old tractor engine to a viewer and friend of the channel, Brian. Hi, Brian. And he'll be putting it into his Mercury Comet Station wagon. See, I thought I was the only Comet Station wagon owner in town, but mine isn't even the best looking one. Worthy fucking adversary. Well, one thing that was really bothering me about my Comet wagon, the rear tailgate could not open. And that was because in order for it to open, the rear window needs to slide down. But my particular wagon had the rear power window option installed at the factory. Problem is, it won't operate and forcing it down didn't work either. So the only way to open the tailgate is to remove all of the trim, window seals, and the channels, and then push it open from the inside. Okay, now I can pop this panel off and figure out why the door is stuck on this side only. If I can get it to go down or I can just pull it out. That's going to be nasty. Oh. I am afraid to look under here, so let's do it together. Oh, jeez. Some uh, brown uh, rust coloration. Straight into the trash. actually better it's a little bit better than I thought it was gonna be I think that'll mostly clean up Let's come over here though so there is definitely yep there's a hole <laughs> what else we got
was actually expecting a lot more rust. And I was going to even say that's okay because that would give me more access to the rear axle. <laughs> Um, now, in the next video, I'm going to swap out that rear axle for a custom De Dion tube. And that's more like a dead axle compared to a live axle. And then it'll allow me to put the, the Nissan Leaf motor right in front of it. And connect the rear wheels to the motor via CV shafts. So I'm going to do that in the very next episode. So subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to check that out. And thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.